This is in reply to your email correspondence dated June 13th, 2020 regarding score conversion tables for the LSAT Flex administrations. Okay. Oh yeah. This is an email yeah. from LSAC yep. to one of our listeners. For non-disclosed tests, including all Flex administrations, LSAC does not disclose the raw to scaled score conversion table. LSAC advises all test takers to prepare as thoroughly as possible Helpful. so as to perform at their very best on each test. For any additional information, please see our Flex website, which is super long, by the way. Thank you for your interest in the LSAT Flex. LSAC. Well, yeah, we know that each section is treated roughly equal, but that's all we know. And that was from a webinar that President Kelly Testy conducted. So we're actually going to integrate this into the daemon, Ben. Can we say mm -hmm. that we're, we're going to yes. start mm -hmm. having flex conversion tables on the daemon? Yeah. Okay. And here's our methodology because this is as close as we can get to it. And I think that this is 99% as close as you need, even need to get, like there's, you don't need to do more than this. You take a real LSAT score conversion table and you just multiply all of those numbers by 75%. Not the uh, 120 to 180 scores, but the number that you need to get correct. You, you drop one of the logical reasoning sections from the test. There's two logical reasoning sections on every test. You drop one of those because that's what they did for the flex. You drop one of those. You're, you're left with three sections. So three out of the four scored sections are remaining. You do those three scored sections. You count up how many you got right. And then when you look at the score conversion table, you just multiply all those numbers by 75%. And that's going to give you, and then still use the same 120 to 180 scoring scale. Yeah. That's it. And that's going to get you as close as anybody could possibly get. I suppose you could, you could also, if you wanted to, before you do that step, you could take both sections of the LR and then average your number correct from those two scored sections in case one of the sections was harder or easier. But I don't even think you need to really bother with that stuff. Yeah. And you know what? It doesn't hurt to get used to the swing, right? Like if a section right. is easier and your score goes up and if it's harder and your section, <laughs> the score goes down, that's the swing you're going to see on LSAT flex day anyways. Right. And so it's, it's kind of stupid. We're, we're going to integrate that into the LSAT demon. Um, we're not going to be out there yelling about how we're offering official free or sorry, official LSAT flex tests. There, there is no such thing as an official LSAT flex practice test. I'm sorry. This there's is, not this is straight up lie. Yes, that is a straight up lie. <laughs> we there. had to look at that and go, wait, do we not have access to something that someone else no, does? It's just, no, what those are, uh, they are official LSAT practice tests. <laughs> where they just dropped one of the sections of LR. And so that, that's all it is. It's not, <laughs> there's nothing magical. Uh, there are, nobody has the secret LSAT flex practice tests. They're, they do not exist, but we, we are going to at least convert those scoring scales for you and let you do a test where you drop one of the sections of LR uh, and then use the converted, the, the new um, scoring scale. But it's still just, you know, an estimate. It's just a lie. It's a fake. It's as close as we can get. It's not official in any sense, except for that the questions that you did were the real LSAT questions and the scoring scale is a converted scoring scale as best as we can estimate it.